Hi guys, it's album review time. We've got Bon Jovi and Forever. This came out on the 7th of June, this Friday just gone. It's the 16th studio album by this American rock band. This is out on Island Records and available everywhere. Um, so Bon Jovi, big part of my life growing up in the 80s. Um, massive part, actually, from the debut album. I followed them religiously up to New Jersey, dipped in and out of them um, after that. Uh, pretty disappointed in what I've heard in recent years so I was quite excited to hear you know that you know there's some things been said in the press and I know that people say you know artists always say this is one of my best albums that's part of the promotion of it and I think um John said in the press that it's got as much energy as Slippery When Wet oh big call to make wrong call in my opinion um totally my opinion by the way this is not this is my opinion it's not the right opinion um any bon jovi fans um that you know you literally can't say anything against the band probably won't want to watch the rest of this review just a, a word of warning to you now i know that john's been going through um massive health problems with his vocals he's had surgery so he doesn't sound too bad on this album actually um and from stuff i've heard recently and this is a much better performance than the last album for sure so kudos to um to john for you know having that surgery and i suppose it was very risky and he seems to be on the mend which is really good so so man this this album though oh, lifeless it's dull um the highlights on this album are average on many bands albums other bands albums for sure and and the age doesn't stop you from writing a good song it does stop you from singing that well especially the vocals are the hardest thing to to look after and with age you know a guitarist can go a lot longer than a, than a than a singer for sure but when it comes to writing songs that's the problem with this album there's a few spots of you know light there at the end of the tunnel maybe but it might be a little bit too late you know bon jovi's career right now i mean if you look at some of the bands some of the classic bands and guys anyone who watches my channel anyone watching this video uh, this channel for the first time totally not stuck in the 80s by the way that is totally not me i promote new music constantly 99 percent of the music that i talk about is now and it's new bands, if not, it's classic bands that are bringing new material out. It's all about new music, and there's loads of it. Um, I mean, look at, not might not be the same type of music, but look at some of the bands that have brought great albums out recently. Judas Priest, Saxon, Scorpions, Striper, Tesla, Journey, Queensryche, Sebastian Bach from Skid Rose brought a great album out, Winger, the list goes on and on. So that part of it, you know, just the excuse is, you know, oh yeah, Bon Jovi's getting on now, it's okay, he can write a crap album. That's no excuse, really. Well, not only are there classic bands that are bringing out great albums in recent years, but also there's new bands that will never get the accolades they deserve and never stand a chance um, that are writing stuff that is just stomps all over this stuff. I mean, you've got bands like, you know, if you're missing Bon Jovi how they were, I'm not saying these bands are exactly like Bon Jovi, but to give you a taste of that, you've got like, bands like, you know, Eclipse and Remedy and Heat and Nesta and Seventh Crystal and Nitrate, The Defiance, Streetlight. There's just a, a massive list of bands that can fulfill those energy. You know, the energy that John Bon Jovi is talking about on Slippery When Wet, you can get that now from new bands or newer bands. Um, it's everywhere music now so you know, it ain't like we're starved of music and then bon jovi bring an album out that's all we got to listen to um it just ain't the case anymore and you know even those little highlights and lights at the end of the tunnel i was talking about which i'll talk about the tracks in a minute even the best songs on this album i won't play them again there's just there's too much music to you know play a dull 
sort of okay song with a, a riff that weren't too bad that harks back a little bit from the John Bon Jovi years. It don't even need to do that. There's so much music now. So this is produced by uh, John Shanks, who's a part of the band as well. I'm not exactly sure what he does musically on this album because I was reading the, you know, what I was reading. I couldn't really tell what he does across this album. I think he's a multi-instrumentalist as well. But um, it's, a, it's an okay production. It's quite clear. Um, it's not that dynamic. It's no better than stuff I hear bands self-produce these days. So, you know, the sound of it is okay. It's passable. But it's not that great. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't fall over head over heels for for this producer and what he's done with this and you know what i was thinking when i'm listening to this album what's it missing i don't even think it misses richie sambora which a lot of fans seem to think is the answer to this i don't even think that is i mean have you heard some of richie's stuff lately that he's writing and how much influence would he be able to have you're not going to hear anything like the classic bon jovi i don't think whether richie comes back or not i really don't so um john's obviously like i said his vocals are okay on this album he you know he doesn't really stretch himself but you can't knock him he, you know he, he's had that surgery and he hopefully he improve even more he, he isn't a bad vocalist he's not out of tune any in any of this album he's singing at a lower range which you would expect um david bryan on the keys obviously some classic members here and tico torres on the drums um do a good job they did it okay but it's not the playing that's a problem here it's the songs in general um phil x on the guitar um i don't think he's let loose enough either there's a couple of songs in here there's a really good solos and then he might as well not be even be in the band at some points it's just where is the guitar you know hugh mcdonald on the bass um and then you've got everett bradley and john shanks it doesn't really say what they're doing the little promotional write-up that i was looking at but you know a big lot of people in this band um but it doesn't really sound like it you could almost it almost feels like three people are playing some of these songs and like i said guys i'm gonna run through the tracks but remember like i said this is only my opinion it's not the right opinion and a lot of people seem to be happy with this bon jovi album not me but I'm just a YouTuber that just likes talking about music. So what do I know? Anyway, so Legendary is the first track. I didn't like this single. This is the first single. It's a really paint by numbers sort of pop song that is catchy. But man, if that's what you're just going for, catchiness, there's pop songs that are catchy in the charts now that are awful. Barbie Girl's catchy, for instance. Does it make it good? No. And you do want your opening song to have, you know, some balls, if you like. But man, this band hasn't had balls for a while now, have they? I mean, they were castrated years and years ago and just their, their bollocks were just thrown in the corner of the room with a pile of other balls. Um, there's just nothing here, man. Um, absolutely nothing on this song that I like, period. Um, we Make It Look Easy is the next track whimper of a track this one it sounds like they are attempting like bruce springsteen but even bruce springsteen can rock out more than this shit uh, the energy is just sucked out of every inch of this song it really is but, but although it felt felt like i was like listening for about an hour already and it's two songs in i thought all right i must push through and give this album a chance living proof is the next track i want to talk about this was a single I actually did a reaction to this and yeah we we got a glimmer of classic bon jovi here um they've had to pull the like the voice box in for the you know living on a prayer nostalgia if you like but a re pretty good chorus a shining light compared to the first couple of tracks not bad at all so uh, nothing solo though which was really disappointing um that it literally does nothing but i was thinking you know when i reacted to this song the other day and I, and I gave it a positive view, outlook. It's how it made me feel, man, with the last Def Leppard album. I was like, you know, they bought out Take It, is it Take It What Take What You Want, whatever it was, the single they bought out a couple of years ago. And I was like, yeah, here, here we go. And then the rest of the album was like, man, really disappointed. But then we move on to Waves. I actually like this track as well. This ain't bad at all. They sort of give us some of that Southern country vibes that they've done in the past um almost shades of young guns like the solo stuff from john bon jovi sort of soundtrack stuff vocally pretty good as well good performance by john great solo here as well and a bit more like it really like this song 
Then we move on to seeds. Again, man, absolutely nothing. Does nothing for me at all. Sort of whimpers along in this sort of Beatles-esque feel. And I was thinking, man, I was really feeling tired listening to this at this point. And you know what? I, as I get older, I have real trouble sleeping. I wake up early and I have trouble sleeping. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. The perfect... The perfect remedy this song would be, honestly, don't drive and play this fucking song, for God's sake. It's an acoustic track, but the, the last track, Waves, was like an acoustic track, but this one does the opposite of that last track. There's no personality here. It's just a bore fest. Kiss the Bride is the next track I want to talk about. The Sentiment is nice. A song that's written for his daughter, John Bon Jovi's daughter, I believe, but man, it's just another snooze fest. It's just nothing i love emotional ballads as well but man the emotion here doesn't seem to hit the same as stuff that john bon jovi and bon jovi have done in the past the people's house is the next track i want to talk about almost reminding me of the keep the faith verse sort of structure but that's where the similarities end is lack of guitar just takes the life out of and the personality out of this track walls of jericho is the next track I want to talk about. Awful song, man. Absolutely awful. It's cheesy. And again, something that could have been improved by at least a hint of electric guitar. The na nars just don't cut it anymore. I'm afraid another lost chance of a half decent song. I wrote you a song is the next track. Oh, fucking hell. I wish you didn't. Um, bon Jovi just does country again, but does it bad when you have a good attempt like like i keep mentioning waves that was a good attempt at a sort of country sort of song you don't need another attempt that just pals in comparison and and that's only with waves being like a a good track you know a, an average to good track this is just terrible living in paradise is the next track i want to talk about that springsteen worship sort of things going on through this song again this is at least showing some balls though it sort of has touches of hope for me but it all is so predictable this stage of the album you just i think you know i've lost i think right this is it any glimmer of classic bon jovi is just not going to happen now um my first guitar is the next track i want to talk about at this stage i feel like the album is about seven tracks probably nine tracks too long at this stage um bon jovi sings about you know being in love with his first guitar it all seems a bit forced and a little sort of fake i don't know why but john if you love your guitar that much turn the fucker up just turn it up and give us some electric guitar musically i don't mind it but overall poor and the last track is hollow man well at least they've gone out with a bang with a rocking track did they fuck a full-on country song that just man just sounds like a million other country songs but even more lifeless i mean i know that doesn't sound possible but i mean not good at all man in fact i like a little bit of southern rock and stuff like that but this is just country done at the most boring level horrible song to end the album on and you know sometimes the album's like you know if you get a good track at the end it makes you want to go and listen to the album again <laughs> fuck no there's none of these tracks that will carry on to my favorites of the year and carry on to my all-time playlist nowhere near it there's so much other good music to to listen to um really disappointing Apparently not as disappointing as the last album where I just really skipped through that. So I can't really make a good judgment call on that. But apparently this is a lot better. Fuck listening to that album. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry, Bon Jovi fans, but I did warn you at the beginning. If you don't like negative things saying about the band, don't watch the rest of the review. So you had that warning. So if you made it all the way through, that was your choice. Um, let me know, guys, if you like this new Bon Jovi album that is called Forever um to tell you the truth i probably won't listen to any more bon jovi until someone says to me they fucking changed lee you know whatever you heard they've changed until i hear that that'll probably be it for me they're really disappointing let me know what you think of it in the comments below though guys and i'll see you soon